there's a tool that can really easily face swap right within Discord, like two clicks and a couple seconds easy. And it's free. It works for any images you might have, mid-journey or otherwise. It will match expressions, angles, lighting, and styles. I've been blown away by this. I really tried to push this to see how much it can do, so I'll cover the limitations and the best ways to fix most of them with some advanced tips at the end. To use it, you need to have your own Discord server, which I would recommend anyone using Midjourney have. Feel free to skip this section if you already do. To create one, click the plus button at the bottom, create my own for me and my friends. Then name your server and upload an image if you want to, then click create. Easy as that, you'll have your shiny new server up here. You can add channels and categories by right clicking or the plus button that can help you stay organized if you'd like. Now we need to invite the Midjourney bot to our server. So open up the Midjourney server, find the bot over on the right and click on it. Click add to server, then select your server from the drop down menu. Click continue, then click authorize. Then verify you're a human if you are. Now back in the new server, you'll see the Midjourney bot has been added. Next, we need to add the Insight Face Swap bot to our server. To do that, just click the invite link that's down in the description. I'll send the link as a message in my new server and click on that, but you can just click it right from the description. Then select your server from the dropdown, click continue, click authorize, verify you're human. Now in your server, you'll see both the Midjourney and the Insight Face Swap bots. You can click this button if you can't see them or to hide them. Now we need to upload faces that we're going to use for our face swaps. To do that, use the command forward slash save ID. Hit enter or click on it here. Drag and drop the face you want to save. Ideally, use a high quality forward facing image with no glasses or hair covering the face for the best results. Then type a name up to 10 characters, then hit enter and it will say your ID name has been created. So I'm starting with my face, which facial hair does make things more difficult, but you can still get it to work really well. So we'll start with an easy one. Photo of a man, portrait. Then I'll upscale the one that's most similar to my face. To make a swap, all you do is right click on the image, hover over apps, then click in swapper. And in just a few seconds, there it is. It's pretty much perfect. It matched the lighting and style. It's all blended really well. So we might as well try these other three out. And these all look great, even with the different facial hairs. You will notice it does run into some minor problems with receding hairlines sometimes. That's a quick fix in Photoshop. Here's some more tests, starting with different angles. So it handles all these pretty well. So let's do emotions. More extreme expressions run into some issues, but it gets most of them really well. Now, different styles. Most of them look amazing. And I'll go over how to fix any of the problems that popped up a little later, but let's move on to some other features first. By the way, for those styles, I mainly use the artists from the portrait section of midlibrary.io. If you've never heard of it, it's an amazing and completely free resource. It's one of my favorite places to get style ideas. But let's upload a couple more faces using that save ID command. For some variation, let's try with a woman and a different skin color. And you can store up to 20 faces at a time. And your primary face, the one when you right click to swap, that will be the last face you uploaded. That was Obama in this case. To switch that, use the command forward slash set ID and enter a different name. I'll switch back to Emma Stone. Now let's see what Emma would look like as a steampunk woman. And this is really helpful because with a lot of celebrities, Midjourney will get pretty close, but it's not all the way there. So if you add insight on top, it makes it a really solid match. So again, just right click, in swapper. On occasion, there will be a queue. That doesn't happen to me that often, and it still works pretty fast when it does. And there it is. Now, how about cyberpunk, solarpunk, decopunk, atompunk, necropunk, or anime? If you want to swap with a photo that wasn't generated in Midjourney, use the command forward slash swap ID, type the ID, I'll use Obama for this one, then drag your photo in. I've got this iconic Hendrix photo. And that looks incredible. It did an amazing job on the expression. It did struggle a little with the bandana, but that's an easy fix in Photoshop.
And if you forget what you've uploaded or what name you used, the command forward slash list ID gives you a list of all the current faces you have saved. Also, which is currently your primary. To remove one face, use the command forward slash DEL ID. Now you can see Obama has been removed from the list. And to remove them all, use forward slash DEL all. And our list is empty now. So that is all the commands, but there is additional functionality within them for multiple faces if you have the paid subscription. There's an easy workaround with the free version, but I subscribed just so I could test it out and show you. So I've uploaded Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Now I'll use swap ID and then type the names I want separated by commas. It replaces left to right in the image. So now we've got Elon and Garzuckle. I tried to come up with something that had better wordplay, but these were just too funny to not use. And if you wanted to do that for free, you could just split it up into two photos, then just swap each of the faces and recombine them. All the other features are available within the free plan. You also get 50 swaps per day for free. And just one caveat is images generated within Midjourney count as one swap. But if you're using images that aren't from Midjourney, it counts as three. So now I wanna cover some of the limitations and the best ways to fix them. The problems we already ran into were facial hair, face tattoos, and extreme expressions. The other is some of the styles don't have the full texture in the face. Another one is this tool only works for humans. It does not work with animals. Sorry, no way around that one. Maybe they'll add it in the future. But the ideal solution for most of the others is to touch it up in Photoshop. You could also use any free photo editor and then generative fill is accessible for free within Adobe Firefly. So for facial hair, starting out with just similar facial hair solves it almost completely, but it is hit and miss otherwise. Same goes for minor face tattoos but you can mask those in from the original in many cases. It would be much more difficult with large ones, so you more just hope it looks good and only needs minor fixes. For expressions, most common expressions work surprisingly well. It's actually pretty crazy what it's able to do there, but something with a really open mouth doesn't work. The best solution is just merge the two photos, keep the old mouth, then if you need, do some blending with generative fill. But now here's an example where the style doesn't match up. The face looks way too smooth and the textures don't blend well at all. It's a more advanced use of generative fill to fix it and it won't work in every case. I have a full generative fill video and there's a section of that where I teach how to turn a photo into an oil painting or a watercolor painting. The fix is using that technique, then add a mask around the face with some feather. That's beyond the scope of this video, but if you learn that technique, it's pretty straightforward from there. You just adjust the settings to make it work for your particular image. Overall, this tool has been a ton of fun, so I hope this helps you create something awesome.